Hey, this is Mr. Aiden. This is the 2022 AP Calculus AB free response exam that was taken on Monday, May 9th. This is the last of the free response questions, question number six, and uh, last of the no calculator questions. Check out my other videos on AP Calculus AB, and this might help you out. Uh, but this is the free response number six. It was a it was a, a, a linear motion problem. It was a position velocity acceleration problem. You can see what did they give me? They gave me two particles. They gave me particle P. Particle P is moving on the x-axis, okay? And this is the position function of particle P. And then you can see particle Q. Particle Q is moving up the y-axis and they gave us a velocity function. They also told me uh, this particle's position at time equals one is equal to two. And so A said, first find VP, find the velocity function of particle P. So how do we find the velocity function of particle P? Well, that's gonna be taking that position function of particle P and taking the derivative. So I'm gonna take this function right here and I'm gonna take the derivative. What's the derivative of six is zero minus, what's the derivative of anything e to anything is e to that anything. So four times e to the negative t. Don't forget the chain rule. We have to take the, the derivative of this negative t. What's the derivative of negative t is negative one. So this negative one multiplies by that negative and we end up getting four e to the negative t. And that is the velocity function of this particle p. Um, at any time, any time, okay? At greater than zero, of course. Uh, the part B said, find the acceleration of particle Q. So we're gonna find the acceleration of particle Q. How do we find the acceleration of particle Q? Well, we have to take the derivative of the particle Q's velocity function. So I'm gonna take this velocity function and I'm gonna take the derivative of it. Something I wanna do is change this velocity function of Q. I wanna change this to equal to t to the negative two power because that'll be a whole lot easier to take the derivative of. I'm gonna use the power rule. So I take, I do negative two t to the negative three and that's equal to, if I clean that up a little bit, negative two over t cubed. That is the acceleration of the function. That's the acceleration of the function right there. Now, they also ask for all times, time is greater than zero, they say the speed is decreasing. So the speed of this particle is decreasing. So how do I know if the speed is decreasing? They're asking us to justify our answer. And so what do we need to do to justify that the speed is decreasing? Well, we have to show that the velocity function and the acceleration function of this particle, that the signs of these particles, of these, of these functions are going to be opposite in signs. They're gonna be opposite signs which means one's gonna be positive, one's gonna be negative, or one's gonna be negative, and one's gonna be positive, okay? So th think of a particle. If that particle is speeding up in the positive direction, okay? If it's positively accelerating in the positive direction, that means it's speeding up. Those signs are in the same direction. But if it, the velocity is positive, it's going in the positive direction, and the acceleration is negative, that would mean it's slowing down, it's decreasing. So those signs have to be positive. So I'm going to simply justify and show that those signs are positive for all, all times greater than zero. So first let's take a look at my velocity function right here. My velocity function is one over t squared. So for all times greater than zero, you can see that the velocity function is going to be positive, isn't it? the velocity function is going to be positive, okay? Because you can see anything squared is gonna be a positive value. But when I take this acceleration function is negative two over t cubed, for all times greater than zero, you can see we're going to be getting acceleration function is gonna be negative. So that proves that the signs are gonna be opposite, therefore the speed is decreasing. And that's how we justify our answer. Let's go to part C. Part C is that we want to find the position function of this particle Q at time T. 
So I have my velocity function. Remember, we're going to take this velocity function as time, and we're going to call this t to the negative 2 power, which means how are we going to find the position function? We have to take the integral, the integral of this velocity function with respect to time. So we're going to take the integral of t to the negative 2, dt. We're going to do the anti-power rule, the opposite of the power rule, which means this, this time is going to become negative 1. Then we are we're going to multiply that by, by that reciprocal, 1 over negative 1. And that gives me negative t to the negative 1 power, or if we clean this up, negative 1 over t plus c, not forgetting that, plus c. Now, I have to figure out what the c is, so I'm going to have to use this initial position here, okay? I know the y of t is equal to 2, the position is equal to 2, when negative 1 over 1 plus c, so negative 1 plus what equals 2, that means c is equal to 3. So what is my final function of this position function is negative 1 over t plus 3, and that is my nice position function right there, okay? So let's go on to the final part of this question. The final part of this question is, it says, as time approaches infinity, as time approaches infinity. So I'm going to be doing a limit problem here. As time approaches infinity, which particle? Particle p or particle q? Okay, well, let's, we have to go to the position functions, okay? So I'm going to take the limit as t approaches infinity of x of p, and I am also going to take the limit as t approaches infinity of y of p, y of q, sorry, y of q, my bad. So I got to go to my functions here. So I have the limit as t approaches infinity of 6 minus 4e to the negative t, and I have the limit, uh, I'm going to change this into red, I'm going to stay consistent, the limit uh, actually, I'm going to clean that up a little bit. The limit as t approaches infinity of, I come back, I have negative, negative 1 over t plus 3. So I have negative 1 over t plus 3. So now I'm going to have to do these limits, okay? So remember, the limit as time approaches infinity, as this goes towards this t up here in, in the exponent, it goes towards in, in infinity, it's e to the negative infinity. Anything to the negative infinity is going to be 0. So 6 minus 0 is equal to 6. And that is a nice limit problem right there. Well, let's take a look at this one. Here, I'm going to take t on the denominator as that approaches infinity. Negative 1 over infinity is 0 plus 3 equals 3. So which particle will be further from the origin? I have to give my claim here is particle p is going to be further from the origin. And how do I know that? Because of my limits here. Well, that was problem number six, the final problem of this AP Calculus 2022 free response exam. Uh, check out my YouTube channel for a whole bunch more math problems. If you want uh, chemistry, AP chemistry, AP physics, go to my website, www.mystery.com. Take, take care. I'll see you later. Bye.